I'm so excited you are here. My name is Mrs. Wheeler, and I teach kindergarten at Hazel Wolf K-8. I know, readers, that you've been spending the last few weeks reading and thinking about nonfiction books, books that we can learn information from. And I'm so excited to be working with you this week, continuing our thinking around nonfiction books and working on wondering about books. We're going to read a really exciting book today about the moon. But before we do, let's remember what we're going to need for our lesson today, okay? You might want to have your extension packet, your literacy packet, that you can pick up at the lunch sites. Or you could just use paper and pencil and a notebook. You don't need the packet. You're also going to need some books to read. And I'll show you how to access nonfiction books if you don't have any at home. Not a problem. And the last thing you're going to need, kindergartners, is you're going to need to do your thinking out loud. And when I say turn and talk, remember that you can talk in any language you feel comfortable in. Also, you can talk to a family member, you can talk to a pet, you can talk to your man, you can pretend you're calling Mrs. Wheeler, you could even go get a stuffy, like I have my little Scotty dog stuffy here, and you could talk to your stuffy when it's time for turn and talk. All right, let's get started. The book we're reading today is called The Moon. And this book is really exciting. Let me read the title and the author to you. The title of this book is The Moon. And this book was written by Martha E. H. Restar. Now, this book tells us interesting facts about the moon. Remember, readers, when we read nonfiction books, any books, we always read and start with the title page. I'm going to move it up nice and close so that you can see the title page. On the title page, remember that nonfiction books often tell us about the author, the title of the book, and they even tell us the publisher. That's the company that made the book. Let me read this to you. The Moon by Martha E. H. Restad. And this book was published by Capstone Press. That's the company that made this book for us. Now, Something else really interesting about nonfiction books is they often have extra pages that tell us more information about our books. This is called the table of contents. Make it nice and big so you can see. Now, in the table of contents, this tells us what's going to be coming up in the book. And I'm going to read this to you, okay? Table of contents, it says, a shining light on page five. What is the moon on page 13? and the moon's surface on page 19. Now readers, before we read this book, I want you to do something. I want to know what is something you are wondering about the moon. You might use this prompt to help you get started. You might say, I am wondering when you're turning and talking to your partner. So think about this. What are you wondering? Turn and talk. Wow, kindergartners, I saw, I heard some pretty amazing things happening just now. I have this poster up here for us that says, things we wonder about the moon. And here are some of the wonderings that I heard from many of the great kindergartners. I heard someone wondering, how big is the moon? Another wonder that I heard is, what is the moon? Another wondering was, can you walk on it? Can you walk on the moon? What is the moon? And the last wondering that I heard from the readers was, how far away is it? I'm going to leave that up for us while we read our book. And we're going to come back to this list of things we wonder about the moon after we read our book. And we're going to see if any of those wonderings were answered. And then if they're not, we might have to find another book on the moon to read. All right, readers, let's get started and read our book. Here we go. A shining light. The moon shines high above Earth. It brightens the night sky. Brightens means to light up. It brightens the night sky. The 
the moon is easy to find at night. Sometimes you can see the moon during the day. The moon reflects the sun's light to earth. Reflects the sun's light to earth means it glows with light from the sun so that it can be seen from earth. The moon reflects the sun's light to earth. The sunlight part of the moon seems to glow. Sometimes only part of the sunlit side of the moon faces earth. Our view makes it seem like the moon changes shape. Readers, let's stop and talk about the part of the book we just read. Kindergartners, what have you learned about the moon from the words and the pictures and the part of the book that I just read? I want you to turn and talk with your partner. share that you've learned about the craters on the moon and that it's covered in gray dust and rocks. Great. Let's look over our book together that we just read the moon. I'm going to give you some big time. I want you to share with me what have you learned about the moon after reading this book right here. Take some time. Okay? What have you learned about the moon? I heard someone share that they learned that the moon looks like it kind of glows at night, like we read about in the book right here in the part right here. I also heard someone else say that the moon is actually a satellite. I learned about that right on this page. And I heard someone share that the moon is 
much smaller than the Earth. So use this picture in this page right here. Great thinking readers. Let's look back at our things we wonder about the moon, paper, and let's think, did all of our wonderings get answered? Or what are you still wondering about the moon? Is there anything you still want to know about it? I'm hearing someone say that they want to know more about how the moon moves and spins. I'm going to add that to our chart, and then when we come back to this book again on day two, we'll continue learning more about the moon. All right, readers. All right, readers. Now that we've finished reading our book, The Moon, let's learn two new vocabulary words from our book, okay? On this page, it was talking about how the moon is up in the sky. It says the moon shines high above earth. It brightens the night sky. The word I want to teach you is the word overhead. Overhead. Overhead means above your head. Here's a picture in our word. Overhead. In the picture, these two girls are looking at the birds overhead above their head. They're up in the sky. The word overhead means above your head. Let's play a little game. Are you ready? I want us to imagine we're standing outside and we were to look up and what could you see overhead in the sky? I might look up and see birds overhead. I might look up and see a plane overhead in the sky. What would you see in the sky? You might want to use this prompt that says outside, I might see blank overhead. What would you see outside? You would look up. I heard some of you say outside, I might see a kite overhead. Outside, I might see a plane overhead. Now, where you are right in your home right now, I want you to think what if you look around and you look up, what is overhead? What is above your head where you are right now? Well, here's your prompt for that. You might say, in my home, I see blank overhead. I see overhead. I heard some of you say, in my home, I see the light overhead above my head. In my home, I see a picture or a painting overhead. Some of you even said, in my home, I see my bunk bed overhead. This is our last, our first word we learned, overhead. Say it with me, overhead. Now, I have another word to teach you from our book, The Moon. On the, this page here, it says, the moon is easy to find at night. Sometimes you can see the moon during the day. The word I want to teach you is visible. Can you say it with me? Visible. Visible means that you can see something. When something is visible, you can see it. The opposite of visible is invisible. When something is invisible, it means you cannot see it. Let's look at our words card and picture here. Read the word with me. Ready? Visible. In this picture, we have two friends playing hide and seek. One friend is under the bed, and one friend says, I see you. She's invisible. We can see her. She is not invisible. Invisible would mean she was hiding, and we couldn't see her. I see you. She is visible. Let's play a little game. We're going to play a game called visible or not visible or invisible. And I want you to say it with me at home. I want you to get some practice using our new word. Are you ready? <clears throat> you might use this to help you practice. You might say the blank is visible because I want to know your thinking. Or you might say the blank is not visible because why? And tell me why. Okay, are you ready? Here's the first one. The sun hidden behind a big cloud. That visible or not visible? I'll read it one more time. The sun hidden behind a big cloud. I hear you saying the sun is not visible.
visible because it's behind a big cloud. We can't see it. Okay, let's try another one. A slide on the playground. Is it visible or not? And why? Do I hear some of you say a slide is visible because you can see it right on the playground. Nothing's blocking it from our sight. Okay, last one. Your heart beating inside your chest. Is that visible or not visible? I hear a lot of you saying not visible. Your heart is not visible because it's inside your chest. You can't see inside your body. Readers, we have those two new words that we want. Let's read them one more time. Overhead and visible. Guess what? It's time for you to now practice your independent reading on your own. It's time for IDR at home. Here's what I want you to do, readers. I want you to get a nonfiction book. And if you don't have a nonfiction book at home, I'll show you in just a second how to find it. Super easy. When you are reading your nonfiction book, readers, remember that I want you to think, what are you learning from your nonfiction book? And I also want to remind you that our nonfiction books have lots of ways that they can teach us extra information. Like, this is the book I'm reading. It's all about penguins. I might use the table of contents to help me learn more information about penguins. I also might use the photographs and the pictures in the nonfiction book to teach me extra information. They often have labels. I might use the diagram or the photograph with labels showing. So readers, I'm going to model for you. I'm going to show you how readers think after they've read a book. What did they learn from that book? And we're going to actually do some writing about it. So I was just reading this page and it talks about penguins and it's showing me all of the different body parts. And I noticed something that I learned about penguins. This book says stiff flippers act like boat paddles to push and steer. I was able to learn that by looking at this photograph and this label right here. So important. It taught me so much extra information that their flippers are kind of like a boat paddle. So readers, here's what you're going to do on your packet or just on a blank piece of paper, I want you to draw a picture and write about what you learned. Draw what you were reading about, and then what did you learn from that book? All right, readers, it's your turn to go. If you don't have any nonfiction books at home, there's lots of ways to get some. Here's how. Okay, you can go to SPS website, seattleschools.org, you can click student portal and then click on academic tools and you can find books on Pebble Go or even Tumble Book. They have nonfiction books. Or you can go to Scholastic Learn at home. All right, readers, thanks for reading with me today. I'll see you again later. Bye.